Hello everyone, I'm Brad with Height, uh, and today we're going to be doing a quick video tutorial on how to upgrade your Y70 case to a Y70 Touch. Uh, what I have here is our Y70 Touch Infinite Display Upgrade. Uh, this is going to come with the display itself as well as all of the cables and screws that you'll need uh, to convert your Y70 case into a Y70 Touch Infinite. This video will also apply to the original Y70 Touch with the 4K screen. Um, and also, you know, if you are just replacing a screen or redoing some of the cable management, you may find this video helpful. So uh, the first thing, you'll need to prepare a few tools. Um, you're gonna wanna have a Phillips head screwdriver, either one with changeable bits, um, or if you don't have that, you're going to want um, a large Phillips head, this is a number two, and a small Phillips head, um, either a one or a 0.5. Uh, the big one is for taking off some of the components in the case. The small one is for getting into the space where the glass mounts uh, into the little channel here. Um, you're also probably going to need something to cut some zip ties, assuming your system already has its cable management done. Um, and then you'll also probably want some replacement zip ties uh, you know, once you're done with the process to get everything tidy again. Uh, as always, uh, anytime you're working inside a PC, you want to make sure your hands are clean and dry before you touch any of the electronics um, and make sure the PC has been turned off for long enough um, that all the uh, energy has discharged uh, and it's no longer hot. So as I mentioned, in this box, you will find an uh, instruction manual. This is going to go over most of what we're going to talk about in this video anyway, so if you would rather have a written guide, you can consult this. It's also available on our website. Under this foam, you'll find the display. So the display itself uh, is fully enclosed. Uh, you don't need to install any kind of circuit boards or anything like that. It just replaces this corner glass panel and plugs in with a couple of cables at the top. And then under this block of foam, you'll have the cables and accessories. Uh, so you have your mini display port cable that connects the screen to the back of the case. You will have your power and data cable, which connects to the power supply um, and to your motherboard's USB header, uh, and the short DisplayPort cable, which connects your graphics card to the uh, mini DisplayPort extender we have here, as well as uh, some extra screws. Most of these screws are actually the same ones that already come with the case, but on the off chance one of them goes missing or you lose it during the install process, there's some extras. So now that I have everything I need uh, for the display upgrade, uh, I'm gonna take some of the panels off of this case uh, to get ready for installing the screen. You're basically gonna need to take all the panels off the case in most situations. Um, nice thing about the Y70 Touch is most of the main panels are toolless. So the rear panel, if I can just pull off, as well as the main glass panel. Make sure to set these somewhere safe so that you don't accidentally knock them over. So those main panels come off uh, without needing any screws uh, to remove this glass panel here on the front. There are two screws here on the back that I'm going to undo. So once you remove the two screws here, the panel pops out pretty easily. Again, remember to place this somewhere safe. And then the last panel is this corner glass. Uh, this is the part that you're going to have to pay a little more attention because the screws aren't as easy to find uh, or reach than uh, the main panels of the case. Basically, there's going to be two screws down in the uh, channels that the main glass panels fit into. And then there's going to be two screws uh, up at the top that hold this to the top of the case as well. Um, so for the two screws at the top, uh, you can use your larger Phillips head screwdriver uh, for the screws that are down in the, the glass channels, that's where you're going to want your smaller screwdriver. I usually like to do the two bottom screws first because otherwise the panel can kind of fall out. Right, now that we've gotten the screws out of the glass channels, I'm going to go ahead and get these two from the top here. A 
Okay, now that we've gotten all four screws out, we can just sort of lift this corner panel out. Uh, again, set this somewhere out of the way. And then we can go ahead and install our display. Um, before you place the display in the case, I do recommend kind of taking note of the mini display port and USB-C port up here on the top edge of the back of the screen, um, just because when you have it in the case, it may be a little harder to see these, just kind of mentally take note of like where they are and which direction they face. Placing this into the case, basically the same as the glass panel that came out before. And then we're gonna do the installation in the reverse of how we took that other glass panel out. So starting with the top screws. Okay, now our screen is installed. Uh, the next step is we're going to run some of the cables uh, through the back of the case to plug into the top edge of the screen. Uh, the first cable I recommend starting with is your mini display port to display port cable. This is going to feed out the back of the case uh, through one of the low profile slots. So if I take our system here, turn it. You can see it'll usually go into this very bottom slot here. Uh, so to access that, we're gonna need to remove the graphics card and that bottom slot. Got my graphics card out, and then I'm going to take out the very bottom expansion slot. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this end of the cable, installing it into this bottom slot here, and then routing the cable up through the back of the case up to the top of the back of the screen. Um, in this system here, we have a top mounted radiator. Um, that you can kind of see up here in the top of the case. It's gonna be a lot easier to access some of the cable management up here if we kind of move this out of the way. Um, so luckily the Y70 has a removable radiator bracket on the top. There are two screws on the back that I can undo over here. Then I can just sort of lift this slightly out of the way um, and it gives me a little bit cleaner access uh, to where these cables are going to run right up at the back of the screen. So the first wire we're going to run, as I mentioned, is our DisplayPort cable. Uh, I'm going to take this end uh, with the large DisplayPort female and the uh, expansion slot cover and kind of push it through uh, from the cable management side of the system up into the front so we can screw it in uh, to that lowest expansion slot. Okay. So we have our DisplayPort cable out here and then I can just mount that into that lower slot. And then the next cable we're going to want to run is our power and data cable. Um, so this has two connections you're going to have to worry about. You have a SATA connection for power that'll connect directly to your power supply. And you have a USB 2 connection that's going to connect to your motherboard. For this, it's fairly important that this USB 2 connection connect directly to your motherboard. Um, if you don't have a free USB 2 header, you can use a powered hub. Um, we do not recommend using a splitter cable with the Y70 Touch uh, USB 2 uh, header. So I'm going to take this cable and then do kind of the same thing. Push it through from the back of the system to uh, get to our motherboard's USB 2 header. Okay, so I've pulled the cable through. Then can plug it into 
go there. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is take the other ends of those cables. So that's going to be the mini display port end of your display port cable and the USB type C end of your power and data cable and kind of run them up through the cable management of the PC and kind of around the top here and then to where they can get to the top of the back of the screen. As you route your cables sort of up through the spine, uh, the back of the motherboard tray, uh, there is a hole right above where the side fans mount that you can sneak your cables through um, and then up around through the, the crown of the case. Uh, there's a little slot uh, that you can feed the cable through over here and then down through the, t the edge here and down and I don't know if you can see this, but out where the top of the screen is. Um, I recommend generally doing the cables one at a time. Uh, it's a bit tough to feed them both at the same time if you haven't done it before. And then the cables will come out here. And then like we said before, if you need some clearance, you can move the radiator slightly out of the way. And that'll give you room bring that cable through. All right, so we have both of our cables now and we can just go ahead and plug them into our screen. Um, at this point, it's probably a good idea before you put everything back together and do all of your cable management uh, to kind of put the graphics card back in, you know, hook the system up to a monitor, boot it up, make sure everything is detected. And then, uh, you know, once you have that done, uh, then you can go and finish the rest of the uh, sort of cable management of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and put the graphics card back um, and then get some of the, the rest of these wires hooked up. And uh, then we're going to cover the software side of this install. Okay, so we have the PC here. Um, we're booted up. We're in Windows. Um, I actually have the screen unplugged still. I do recommend when you first power on the system for the first time after installing the screen, you leave the DisplayPort cable unplugged just to make sure that you can get into Windows um, and go and download the newest version of Nexus uh, before plugging the screen in. So I've gone and done that. I haven't installed Nexus yet, I've just downloaded it. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and plug this cable in to the back of the PC. So one end is going to go into your graphics card and the other end is gonna go into the little display port that we installed in that lower expansion slot. Okay, and if all goes as planned, you should see your Windows desktop now show up here on the touch infinite display. Um, if it's rotated uh, sort of in you flip 90 degrees, that's very normal. Uh, one thing you do wanna make sure of, uh, depending on the ports that you've used on your graphics card, uh, which monitor Windows is identifying as your primary display. Um, so you'll see here we have our main display here and then we have the corner panel next to it. Um, this one is already selected as our main display, but on the off chance that yours is flipped the other way around, you wanna make sure that whatever display you're using to actually configure your uh, Nexus software is selected in Windows. Um, and again, this um, landscape slash portrait orientation, this is very normal. When you first plug the screen in, it's gonna be rotated 90 degrees. That'll get taken care of in the next step. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to hype.com. Um, click on the Nexus software link here at the top of the screen. Then you're going to want to download the newest version of Nexus by clicking on this button up here. I've already got it downloaded, so we're going to run the setup. Give it permissions. Accept the EULA. Uh, you can choose here if you want Nexus to be installed for only the ma main user or all users on the PC. Install path. Let it install. And then let it run after it finishes installing. Give it permissions. It'll load for a second. Okay, and then if this is your first time running Nexus, you're gonna be greeted by a few prompts. You can choose to either create an account or continue as guest. Um, you'll be given some performance tuning 
uh, options. Usually I would recommend if this is your first time using Nexus, just leaving it at default. You can always go back to these settings later and change them. Um, and then whether or not you want to enable video wallpapers. Again, this is something that you can change later, so I'm just going to leave it. You'll get a few patch notes. And click to accept those. And the software should automatically detect that there is the Touch Infinite panel ready to be configured. Um, so there's a quick few steps here. Uh, click Get Started. This next step will rotate the screen. So we'll click that and you'll notice now the screen will be rotated into the correct orientation. We'll click Next. Uh, this part is pretty important. Um, so this is basically going to calibrate which of the displays is actually the touch panel as far as Windows is concerned. So if I go here and click the word calibrate, um, what'll generally happen is you'll see this message pop up on either one of the displays. If you have more than two displays, you may see it pop up on a different display. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna press enter until it shows up on the touch screen itself. So to show you again, right? It shows up here. I'm gonna press enter until it shows up here. And then I'm gonna tap the screen. What that has done is it has told Windows the screen I tapped is the touch screen. So we've got that calibrated, click next. The next step is to disable Windows touch gestures. And that's only because you'll be using certain touch gestures on Nexus touch anyways, and you don't want them triggering certain Windows commands. So we're gonna disable those. Click next. The last step is to tell Nexus whether you want video wallpapers on your Y70 touch corner display we're gonna leave that on. Again, it's something you can configure later on. Click finish, and there we have it. You should see Nexus Touch running here on your corner display, and you can start playing around with the touch features. So we have our display upgrade installed in our system. We have Nexus installed. We have Nexus Touch running. Uh, at this point would be a good time to go ahead and put the rest of the panels back on the PC and if you still need to do some of your cable management, you can go ahead and do that because now we know everything is working as intended. Um, and then you can go and start exploring Nexus Touch, uh, setting up your new screen with different video wallpapers, different widgets. Um, there's a whole lot of different features uh, that you'll cover in a different guide. Um, if you encountered any problems during the install, if things didn't go as I had described, uh, go ahead and get in touch with our support. Um, you can reach them via the contact form on our website, or you can check us out on Discord or message us on Reddit. Uh, we should be able to get to you through you know, whatever your preferred communication channel is. Hopefully you found this guide helpful. Again, I am Brad with Height, and uh, I'll let you go and enjoy your new Y70 Touch Infinite display.